Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our time here with the Lord. <clears throat> and again, good evening, everybody. I'm Brian Tewitt of Anita and the Man. Welcome to our broadcast as we prepare to send forth the living word of God and its love throughout all the countries of this beautiful footstool called Earth. And we bring the beauty no matter what is against us and all the stumbling blocks trying to trip us up and guide us away from that straight and narrow. We go forward in the matchless name of Jesus and spreading forward his living word of God. Today, tonight, and again it's 6 p.m. here in Los Angeles and my beautiful wife just came in and said, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. All right. Glory to God. She's going to be in the back right next door to us praying in the spirit with the prayer choir. And we are, are proud to say that if you want to stay in touch with us our, of our growing ministry and crusade, go to BrianTewitt.com, BrianTewitt.com, and uh, just stay up to date with all of our exciting crusades and events. So we're going to be chapter 12 of Revelation 7 through 17. Many of our contemporaries call it this, the fight of the dragon part two. Uh, we are just going forward, sharing with you the pearls of God's wisdom, the wonders of wonders of this of this world that we live in. So let's grab an empty piece of paper and let's grab our Bibles, turn to Revelation 12. Let's go before the throne of God and pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your time, your endless term of your love that brings us to the depth of your love that brings us to the depth of the road of grace, which brings us to the straight and narrow. For many are called a few are chosen. We thank you for your endless love, baptized by the blood of Calvary, baptized by the empty tomb, given us that new heart. As you lift up in the utmost of all purity of that new heart, you have removed the stony edges of the old heart, renewed our minds, and taught us what peace is, which is a gift from God. It cannot be negotiated by the ways of men, but can only be prayed through. For in Jesus' name, we love thee. We go into our lessons tonight with much reflection of what is already happening in the world, what is to come, all these false promises of people just sounding so clear and cut and wonderful. But we must educate ourselves in the Word of God to express God's wisdom and discernment and to pray unto, unto God every day. Dear Lord, I want to know you ever so more every day. I lift up my repentance. I lift up our prayers as dear God pours down these new mercies upon us every day. And there was war in heaven. Verse 7 we're starting out with. And there was war in heaven. And Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. And we fell not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And a great dragon was cast out. The old serpent called the devil and Satan. Which deceived the whole world. He was cast out in the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. And I heard... <coughs> A loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength in the kingdom of God, of God and the power of, of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren, a cast down which accursed them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of, of the Lamb and the word of, of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the seal of, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child, and, and to the woman were given two wings of a great ego, that she might fly into the wilderness, wilderness and to her place where she was nourished for a time, and times and a half time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out his mouth water as a flood against the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the, of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, or went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Oh, we thank you for the reading and the blessings of this word. Dear Jesus, again we're in Revelation chapter 12, 7 through 17. We are speaking of the conflicts, the growing conflicts. Perhaps we should call this a harvest of conflicts. We could not have this coming to us if, if we as a world 
of all of us, all of us, all of us, were obedient to Christ. Heaven would be on earth, earth would be in heaven, oh my God, but joy. But we have growing conflicts every day, as we see on the news, and the wars within us in Syria. But instead of trying to squash each other down and feel that we have that powerful upper hand over these innocent, some innocent people, some not so innocent people, we have to take our, di our daily digestion of prayer and see what exactly are we are we doing. What are we trying to express when we are going in a very demonic, powerful forces that we go into when we turn our backs to God? In verses 1 through 6, we read about Christ's successful invasion into Satan's domain, the world. Despite Satan's best efforts, he came into the world to, and, won his, and won his victory. His people, us, the church, are still in the wreckage of Satan's world or the first budding of Christ's kingdom on earth. But God gave us refuge from Satan atta Satan's attacks. Now in three short verses we read Satan's counter assault of, of God's heavenly stronghold. John begins his passage with the sentence, There was war in heaven. <clears throat> ah, we may think that this is the final confrontation between God and Satan, the forces of good and, and forces of evil. But if we do, we are sorely mistaken. God doesn't even bother lifting a finger. He, he leans over to Michael, one of his arch angles, and says, Michael, would you please go out and take care of this mess, please? And Michael, there is only one or three places in Scripture where Michael is mentioned. The other two are in Daniel chapter 10 and Jude. The common Jewish understanding of the time, however, Michael was the guardian angel of the Jewish nation. So he's not exactly a minor angel. Nonetheless, he is an angel, a servant of God. There are a dualist tension between God and Satan and Michael. One, one God, one God can handle Satan and his crowd without any help from God. That's all. That's it. The archangel angel Michael. However, <clears throat> we keep losing sight of the fact. We keep thinking that Satan is powerful. Well, he's dangerous. He's dangerous, and we need to be aware of him. But if we are resting secure on the grace of God, we have nothing to worry about. We're not going to lose any sleep over this chump. And he is a chump. You have more power in the word Jesus than any ten antichrists put together. The reason why we may give the devil more than is due is, well, because we fall for his tricks. In this passage, we read the two descriptions of Satan and what he does. Remember, Satan has nothing but Three tricks in his trick bag. Controlling, controlling your thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. And we take this cup from God, the cup of wisdom. And if, if we know the cup is empty, we don't panic. We just ask God to refill it. Ask God, what are we doing wrong in our lives? Ask God, Lord, take me, love me, I'm yours. Bring me to your mountaintop. Bring me from to the valleys to the mountaintop. Show me, give me your strength. Show me your strength. Give me all that I need to be of that perfecting work unto you. Unto you. This is our life, brethren. This is our time. This is our way of being in control. Mentally, physically, spiritually. All coming into one mind and one judgment of Christ, walking in the spirit and in the truth. So help me God. What is wrong with you that you cannot see? <coughs> see the blindness covering yourself, covering the world. What is wrong with any of this that we are reflecting suddenly? to educate the elect for God's purpose for God's driven force he is coming back with a vengeance he's coming back for the bride first he's coming back for all then he's coming back with a vengeance you want to be left behind that's your choice Anita and I did our job the dear Lord will not be able God will not be able to say did you teach the book of Revelation? Did you teach the A3Z, you and Anita? Did you 
repent of your sins daily? Did you ask God? Did you do your Bible studies? We did. We did, and we did, and we did. Satan, as the accuser, which we read about in verse 10, this is actually what this, the name Satan means, the accuser in the original Old Testament understanding of Satan. This is how he was first understood. It was the one who brought accusations to God about the sins of the people. It may be easiest for us to think of Satan as the prosecuting attorney, presenting a case against the people before God, the judge. But over time, he wasn't content merely to accuse people of what they would have done wrong. He began to create situations so that he could have something to accuse us of. And we go into all of Satan's actions accusations whether they're accurate or not he may be acting in bad faith stacking the deck against us but our sins were real it led to punishment and punishment they will lead us deeper if we don't turn our lives over to Christ if we do not repent of our sins because without repentance how can God forgive you if we cannot forgive those who ought against us if I could not forgive those who who caused several assassination attempts on my life I, I could not receive God's forgiveness and that I did and I turned a lot of heads upon that but how you drive your enemy insane is to forgive them love them but doesn't mean you have to hang with them okay very simple hang them love them hang them by forgiveness and God's love you don't have to go to jail for hanging them physically just give them the truth of God's love and they will be torn apart because Satan low-ranking lieutenants on this earth cannot handle God's perfecting love. They can't explain it. They cannot digest it. They cannot, if they do, the word of the word of God just implodes them from God's own love. From the blood of Calvary, it just implodes th within their wicked, wicked, sinful bodies. But God has an answer for it all. Yes, we have sinned. A payment has already been made for us for that sin and, and, and for any and for all sin that that will ever happen. Our relationship with our people, our people, no longer depends upon them living sinless lives. It only depends upon the victory that Christ has won on the cross and in the tomb. Satan's career as an accuser is bankrupt, is over, fired. No unemployment check given to this chump. Our sin is overcome by the blood of the Lamb. And there are no longer no longer any accusations so eventually we're going to have Satan control the world government and after God has played his little game over Satan Jesus is coming back Whew. big time bigger than big time like yours truly the man used to say it's going to be real it's going to be beautiful it's going to be swimming in blood and Anita and the men will be up in heaven I'm not sure if we're going to be able to see all this, but if we are, hey, we're going to be happy, praising God, praying, praying, and praying for God, for God, for God. You see, brethren, I'm not afraid to die. I have a lot of people in the world of journalism, law enforcement, ministry especially, afraid to die. So what do they do? They get bought off. They turn on people like me and my wife. Do I care? No, I don't care for them. My life goes on. I'm a success with these people and without these people, more so without these people. Because I have a God's love. Who in God's... No, no one can take that away from me but myself. And even then, when I fall into any temptation of sin, God is still with me. God is rebuking me. God is loving me. See, choices are not predestined, but what I always love sharing to the world is our one goal that God gave us is true to all of us. Matthew 6, 13. Thine is a kingdom and a power and a glory forever and ever. Matthew 7, 7. It quickly just says, Ask, seek, and knock. Knock. Keep on knocking, God. Keep on knocking, brothers and sisters. For God, for God, for God. He hears your prayers. Your prayers go up before his face like incense. He hears each and one of your prayers. Be obedient to what God is saying unto you. Be obedient to his truth and his love. Be obedient to what he's expressing to you. And eat the living word of God. Make it your daily diet, your morning diet, every kind of diet that you can think of. It is yours. It is yours. 
And quite often around this time of the day and night, around 6 a.m. and between 6 a.m. and 6.30 and 6 p.m. as we are now, and 6.30 p.m. here in Los Angeles, West Coast region of, of North America, if you want to look on your map, how can I come forward? I've done this. I robbed a bank. Someone wrote to me. I, I killed someone. Went to jail for 17, 18 years. I'm getting that edgy finger again. What do I do? Well, recommit your life. Turn yourself over to Christ. If there is someone in a jail cell library listening to this broadcast, make this that jail your seminary. Turn that into your witnessing tool, your foundation of earth on this earth. Well, Romans 10, 13 cries out to you tonight, brethren, for, who, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mark 11, 22, have faith in God. Walk forward, step forward in the name of Jesus tonight. Tonight. So repeat this off to me, please. Dear God, I admit I am a sinner, and I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died in my place, paying the penalty for my sins. I am willing right now to turn from my sin, accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I commit myself to you and ask you to send the Holy Spirit into my life, fill me and take control, and to help me become the kind of person you have always wanted me to be. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing me forward. That's my wife praising him in the background. I am singing your name. Uh, most important, the angels have a singing your name before the throne of God in your name to God in the name of Jesus so we take this cup of wisdom we thank you Jesus for filling this up we ask you for all that we believe in our heart that you should receive us and we ask you for all of our sins our lying deceitful our fornications our drugs our addictions we're left of all and all unto you O God we ask you to forgive us our sins we thank you, Lord, for bringing us forward. We thank you for bring, throwing our sins to the sea of forgetfulness. And we take true measures of receiving the gifts and strengths you've given us to make them stronger by, the, by making it a practice, by embracing the blood of Calvary, by embracing the living word of God and coming to one mind, one judgment of Christ. In Jesus' name. And brethren, it also starts with new relationships. <clears throat> in many different parts of my life, I realized as I was growing and maturing that some people are just in your life for a season. It's up to you how you want to remove them or keep them and perhaps grow with them or, or go down with them. In most cases, they are still caught up in their own wicked ways of sin. And many of, let's just say, my boys from the hood that I knew when I was much younger are still doing the things that they were doing in the boys of the hood days. And so with that, they haven't changed at all. They are still the wicked ways of addictions of of one child from a different man or woman and, and just getting deeper and deeper and deeper into drugs and, and just blaming eco the world economics for, for, for their own problems. But we change. God brings us across that river change into his eternal life, his, his open arms. Change. And when he embraces us, we feel the change. We feel the, we feel the nails, the scars on his hands. We feel all oh, the weight of the sins of the world that he died for us because he also we must carry the cross. We must die daily. We must be, our faith is measured by how deep we want to be crucified on that cross daily with Christ. In Jesus' name. We will go to that promised land. We may not get there at the same time together, but we are going to be there. So again, choices are not predestined. So if Anita gets into heaven, she got there. And the final answer is seven. She got there, six plus one. If I, if I get to heaven, my, my, my road to that was five plus two. Same answer, same end results, different experiences that brought us together in the unity of marriage, which gave us a lot of strength and has really, really exploded our ministry to a growing online church, to a growing missionary teams throughout the world, to growing an abundance of God's loving truth. 
God's loving truth in the matchless name of Jesus, we love thee. We need thee. We're coming into thee more and more. We... So how... How... As if we could ever earn God's love, or would ever have to, this deception could do something more like, yeah, Christ died for your sins, but what you just did in anything person that you are is so horrible that not even God can love. Well, God can love you just how deep your sin is or how good you think you are. How can He can try to get you to, to deny the greatest truth of, of all creation? That's the devil trying to make you think in a negative, pathetic way. But God loves us. God loves you. And there is nothing that can never stop or interfere with that love. Let me say that again. There is nothing that can ever stop or interfere with that love. We are not capable of doing something so big that God cannot forgive it. So, how do we resist Satan? We hear the answer in verse 11 of the Song of Victory. We can be like brothers who resist and overcome Satan with two things. First, the blood of the Lamb and acceptance of Christ's self-giving sacrifice for us. Through his death and resurrection, Satan's accusations no longer have any hold over us. Second, they resist and overcome Satan by the word of the testimony. That is so simple and obvious that it is easy for us to overlook. The best way to combat deception and lies is with the truth. We silence accusations and we expose deception by proclaiming the truth of Christ's atonement. We have the victory. We have, any chump can have a testimony. That's what Satan has. It's only as a testimony. God's given you a victory testimony. All you have to do is fight the fight of good faith. You are going to fight a fight, but it doesn't mean you have to beat someone's head off. Shoot him. Kill him. Rob his car. Take down his wife. No. You are going into this time. You are fighting the fight of good faith. You are living your life no matter what your spouse does or not does not do. It is up to you to live your life with Christ. Now Satan isn't going to like that. Well, tears come to my eyes. You know, he'll try to shut us up. He'll try to attack us against us because. But take that as a compliment. Like yours truly, the man Brian Hugh does. Anytime, anytime that I am attacked, which is quite often every day, I believe. I take it as a great compliment. <clears throat> Say, Jesus, hang the chump. Expose him publicly. Let me use my double-edged sword to expose his wicked lies, expose his wicked deceptions. But if we love God above all else, even life, Satan can never win. But even at this, we need to remember that God's power to protect and save us is infinitely greater than any attack Satan can throw at us. The worst thing that we can do is to forget his love, his power, and begin to believe that satanic lie that we are caught in an epic battle against between good and evil. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> it is all good. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm not fighting a war of good and evil. I'm fighting the fight of good faith. I'm proclaiming the living word of God. I, I as we just said, we are going forward and proclaiming God's word so the lost souls can accept Christ's self-giving sacrifice for us all through his death and resurrection and, and second to resist and overcome Satan by the word of our testimony we go forward in the matchless name of Jesus guiding and protecting all and all and all a strong strong healthy life. With this, brothers and sisters, I just want to share what Satan has direct access to heaven tonight, as we discussed in the opening verse of chapter 7. Let me give you some cross scriptures just to pray over just Job, Job chapter 1, 6 through 12. So let's get it into that. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, 
Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Joel? And there is none like unto him in the earth, or perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and ensueth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for, for naught? Hast not thou made a hedge about him, about his house, and about all he hath? On every side thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon us shall put now forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Job chapter 2, 1 through 7. Again, there was a day when the, world, when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan among them to present himself before God, before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? And sent Satan answered the Lord, From going down to and fro in the earth, and walking up and down in it. And the Lord said, Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job? There is one, there is none like him in earth, or perfect and upright man. And we go into God's love. And we go into that God is going to save our lives. Now first John chapter two, verse one. My little children, these things while I was with you, yet ye sin not. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. First Corinthians chapter ten, verse thirteen. There hath no temptation ta taken you, but such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. And no marvel of, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So, again, Satan does have This time that he can fool us, put many different disguises upon us. He's a serpent, the, si the shining one, the, the devil, the slanderer, the accuser. We have the we have the advocate, this, and the devil does not have one. Satan, the adversary, he is our enemy, the deceiver. He has deceived all of us, deceived the elect. And go into this time, brothers and sisters, go into this time right now into his love, his truth. And we have a desperate <coughs> anger that Satan has, a desperate attack. So the only sure way to defeat the devil is through the blood of Jesus Christ. It will do the trick in the, in the tribulation. Satan runs out in fear from the, from the blood in our day. Praise God! The precious blood of Jesus Christ is sufficient to defeat the devil forever and eventually will put him in his rightful place into the bottomless pit of Hades itself and hell's fire. In Jesus' name. Brethren, again, choices are not predestined. So tonight is your day, it's your night of opportunity. Let's take advantage of this. Here in North America, it's, it's evening time. Asia, East Africa, it's your new day is coming. Again, let's get into our prayers, our supplications. Let's lift up all of our repentance under God, our prayers, so we can pour those new mercies upon us every day. Every day. Every day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go before the throne of God and pray out. Dear Jesus. Amen. What a night. What a night. What a night. What a morning. What a morning. What a morning. We thank you for your love. Your endless rhyme that leads us to eternity, baptized in the name of the kingdom of heaven, baptized in Jesus Christ. Wisdom takes us by the hand and brings us to that door of faith. With Jesus Christ, you open up that door of faith and walk into our new home, the house of salvation. We go into the depths of our hearts for that, that, ex that is expressed from, uh, from the empty tomb. You bring us, O oh, wisdom, by before the, the cross, covered by the blood of Calvary and we look into the eyes of Christ and his, his eyes look upon our hearts and we are changed in an instant we are changed dear Jesus from the heavenlies of all heavenlies 
Look down upon the earth and bring peace, your peace, your hand, your hand, your healing, your healing upon all tonight, this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, brethren, what a night, what a night, what a morning, and good morning to you. And good evening to you in North America. Again, that concludes our broadcast for this evening. We thank you for your time until next time. I'm Brian Hewitt, on behalf of Anita and the man. We say, stay up to date on of all of our up news and information of all of our crusades at brianhewitt.com. It's Friday, the 19th of here, and we wish you all a blessed weekend. And stay up to date again at brianhewitt.com, brianhewitt.com, and we look forward for you to become a financial partner with us to join us in our crusades. Get all that news and information of everything, everything on our website that I just said. Brethren, it's been a blessed week, a blessed, blessed week, and I love, love teaching all unto you. We thank you for your replies. And we walk by faith and not by sight. Au revoir, adios, good day.